Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and today I want to uh, throw another video on the Arturia Astrolab onto the fire, but I want to take a different approach. I want to answer a question that probably a lot of you are asking, and that is, who is this for? Who is this weird keyboard for? This keyboard that takes all of Arturia's V collection and that shoves it into a plugin with tons of presets and less editing, and then takes that and puts it in a hardware synth with even less editing. Well, I think I have some insight into this. It's just speculation, so if you want to come along for the ride, let's speculate on who this keyboard is for if you think that it's not for you. So a little bit of background. This is a hardware version of Analog Lab, which is the condensation of all of Arturia's V collection, which is a huge collection of synthesizers and effects uh, modeling synths that you have heard of, like the Juno 106, the SQ80, the Synclavier, uh, what else? Uh, it's also got things like Vox Continental, it's got pianos, it's got Rhodes, it's got an ungodly amount of stuff, honestly. If you bought it, you probably wouldn't need anything else. It also has things like Pigments, which is a very, very future-facing synth, which I love to death and use all the time, and things like the Augmented series, which are uh, sort of piano strings and voice that have been augmented with sort of experimental and futuristic additions. So we have all of these things that are available as individual plugins shoved into this sort of browser-based, tagged-based system that when you load a preset, you get minimal editing tools and you just kind of play and do minimal tweaking. The Astrolab takes all of that, puts it into this hardware thing, and also gives you less editing uh, over the presets than you would in Analog Lab itself. It's compatible right now with the V Collection 9 instruments and pigments, and will be uh, compatible going forward with the V Collection 10 instruments, and then will be regularly updated after that. So you can load two patches at once, and uh, play them together. So you can load a patch from one synthesizer and layer it with another one, or you can just load one patch from a synthesizer. There is a uh, browsing system, um, which is okay. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's also not uh, the worst thing in the world. Keyboard feels fine. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty, I guess, especially if you get the wood legs. It's fine. My overall uh, perception of it while playing it is that this is cool. It's fine. It does what it says. I notice no like, you know, major glaring issues, but it's not for me, especially when I have something like the Montage M6 um, sitting in front of my desk. It kind of does all the things that the Astrolab does, but I can go a lot deeper. Now, that's not very fair to compare those two because one is a very expensive workstation and the other one is, well, we'll get into what it, I think it is, uh, but it's like around $1,500, I think, uh, MSRP, maybe a tiny bit more, maybe $1,599. So apples to oranges in a way. But why can't fruit be compared? So I'm sitting around, I'm playing this thing, I'm saying, wow, these presets sound pretty good. Um, the piano sounds pretty good, but like, where would I put this in my studio? Like as somebody who really likes to sit down and get deep into things, like would I use this? I personally think for somebody like me that has like a lot of stuff in their studio already, I don't really have a place for the Astrolab, especially since I don't have a lot of space in my studio. Would it work in like my living room to just sit and play? Yeah, to an extent, but I think I would rather buy a really nice digital piano uh, or real piano with 88 keys um, with that kind of weighting. Because when I sit down and play, that's what I want to play. And that got me thinking, okay, we've got one sound at a time, pretty much. We have a lot of different presets, including presets that are specifically geared towards tributes to classic bands like Pink Floyd and Air and Depeche Mode, very, very clearly set up to such a way, say, buy these presets and you will have sounds from these bands. So of the two things that I think this synth is very, very geared toward, this exposes the first one. I think this is for people who are playing in cover bands or bands in general, but, but specifically cover bands for uh, the kind of sounds that you would find in these synths. These people are sitting down with other people. They don't need a whole like bunch of like sequencing and stuff like that in the keyboard because they have a band around them. They just need to play that one sound that sounds the way it needs to for that part of the song and maybe switch to a piano in the next song for something else. I don't know, I'm not in a cover band, 
but I can see this being very, very good for somebody in a band who needs to play one thing at a time. This would be astoundingly great for that. Not a lot of people on the internet who are making a lot of stink about things, I think, are players. I think they are noodlers. Um, and so they look at something like this where you could sit down and just like play it and they're probably thinking, well, that's dumb because they don't know how to play an instrument. People who do know how to play an instrument might be looking at this and say, well, that's dumb. And that's totally understandable. You know, you could also go and buy a Nord or something like that if you wanted like a piano. And that leads me to the second group of people who I think this might be aimed at. And that is worship players, church band players. I don't know if a lot of you know this, but the amount of money spent on worship music gear is far more than you probably think it is. There are a ton of channels on YouTube specifically about buying things for being in worship bands. It actually looks a lot like GearTube. It's, it's not dissimilar at all. Um, the regular gear tube, excuse me, the secular gear tube, we'll call it. You probably don't know that is an incredible amount of money spent on it. I found this article that said that church bands and makers of praise and worship music account for roughly a third of all new instrument and audio equipment sales, according to research from Fender. Now that's a guitar manufacturer, but I think we can still kind of take this as a slice of life, a slice of the, the pie kind of thing. Ultimate Guitar cites a Fender calculation that approximately around 600 million, or 30% of the estimated 1.5 to $2 billion spent on music making gear each year in the US comes from players or organizations involving in praise and worship music. I know there's a lot of people who, who will never think about praise and worship music as a reason that companies make things, but it is a huge reason. And that can lead you to thinking about other reasons that gear might be made that make it not for you, but could make it successful. Hey, editing Jeremy here. I noticed something while I was editing this video and I thought I'd butt in and say that there might be a third person, a third type of person that this is for. As I was editing, I had the Arturia Analog Lab page up and it was auto playing this video showing off all the features of Analog Lab. And one of them is a marketplace where you can buy preset packs. And I was like, oh, is this a hardware front end for selling packs? You know, obviously that's not all it's for, but certainly if you have a pack marketplace and you have a device that only plays presets, packs are gonna look pretty hot to uh, somebody in that position. So um, maybe this is actually for Arturia. Maybe this product is made just for them. I know it's cynical, but you know, that's the world we live in. Love you, Arturia. I have my own sort of issues with the Astrolab. While I do like it and I do think it sounds good, I kind of wish that I had more control over things. I'm the kind of person who gets super deep into the synthesizers that I have, and I really, really like making presets and making sounds. And that's why I'm not doing the kind of review of this synth or like demo of this synth that maybe other people are doing, because once you've answered the questions about what Astrolab is, it doesn't really get much deeper than that. There are other small questions you can ask, like how MIDI controllable is it? What's the iPad app like? What are the stereo inputs for on the back? I can actually answer that because this was a big point of contention for me. So Vocoder V is one of the plugins that you can get with Analog Lab and it is a very great vocoder. So I was really excited about loading up some Vocoder V presets and just putting a mic back there and being able to vocode uh, in the box. Well, that's not exactly how it works. You have to edit the vocode preset uh, on, on the software side on your computer and then put that preset over onto the Astrolab if you want something that will use the input. And that goes for any other thing that um, you want to use the input for. It has to be set up that way over on the software side and then transferred over. There is an iPad app, which I think is really cool. I think the uh, thing acts as like a hotspot or something so you can you know, access a marketplace and a library of presets on the iPad and then um, shoot those over wirelessly, so that's pretty neat. But not being able to just like sit down and vocode is I think a big frustrating thing, at least for me. So let's finish up. I want to kind of just get in your head that when you see a piece of gear that you don't like, don't get angry about it, unless it's like, something like, I don't know, I'm not gonna say it. Don't get angry about it. Just think to yourself, hey, this isn't for me. This is not for me and that's fine. If you wanna go a step further, 
maybe think about who it could be for. Maybe try to broaden your mindset regarding gear and why it's made and the different types of people who play music. Because I guarantee you, you're not the only type of musician that's out there. And that's good because we need all different kinds of musicians. All right, I think that's enough for today. I'm sure there are a lot of videos of this thing that you have to go watch to uh, be angry about or be happy about, be sad, be bursting with rage. Maybe you're horny for it. I don't know. I'm not you. I do want to mention real quick that I have a new project, a music project called Leashes. Maybe you've seen the OP1 videos where we've done a couple tracks together, including Instinct or Blood. Those tracks are finally getting put up on streaming and the like. So by the time this video is out, uh, at least Instinct should be up on streaming. I'll put a link in the video description. I know a lot of people are really, really interested in that song. Yeah, so uh, just wanted to let you know. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Wait.